Hey everyone, and welcome back to episode three of the Create Above and Beyond mod pack. If you missed episode two, go ahead and check it out in the top right. Oh my, here we go again. Top right hand corner. I give up. Not even going to try to point uh, if, if you want to go ahead and check that out. And also make sure to drop a like and subscribe. Uh, but without holding back any further, let's jump into the video. All right, so uh, we have a, a little bit of a game plan today. So uh, a couple different things need to be crafted. Uh, and let's go ahead and use our book and quill to go ahead and lay this out. So our general idea of this episode is that we're going to begin by making mechanical belts. We're going to semi-automate the whole process. We'll have to see. Uh, and then after that, we're going to automate andesite machines and get it fully automated. So andesite machines are getting created uh, pretty fast. Now, you guys brought up some great ideas for transporting items, which I kind of ran into over here uh, with our washing station, um, with our clay and things like that, where basically pulling items and connecting to each other could be done via just like a water source, just throwing items into the water and then it will transfer. Uh, I believe one of you guys actually said to just literally place an encased fan and then blow the items to wherever you need to go, which is another option. Um, but I figured that we're, we're gonna need to go ahead and automate uh, resin, which means mechanical belts and things like that in the future, like as a guarantee. So it kind of just makes sense to just do that now. So let's work on that. Quick little side thing. Um, I found that these Edelwood water buckets can hold four sources of water, uh, which is something that I thought I broke the last time we did a video because I was able to place down multiple buckets of water, uh, but you can actually hold four water sources. I figured I'd pass that. All right, so to get automated mechanical belts, we need six cured rubber, uh, which is just crafted or I guess automated shape crafted. And to get uh, cured rubber, there's a, a couple different ways, but all of it usually includes just general rubber. Uh, and rubber is basically from compacting resin that has been placed inside of a basin with a press. And resin comes from an ar arboreal extractor, which I'm guessing you just place against a tree and it will begin to pull out resin. Hoping that I don't need to power this. I've not used one of these, so we're going to have to see along those lines. Uh, but it will then just go ahead and slowly pull out resin and place it uh, inside itself. And we just need to then pull that out and place it into a basin, which we can probably do via like pipes. Uh, but let's go ahead and see if we can craft one of these guys, which is just a bucket and an andesite machine. So let's go ahead and get that. There we go. Now we have an arbor arboreal extractor. And then let's see really quick. We're gonna go ahead and test it out over in this area. So if I place this guy right here, it should be aimed at our oak log. And if we click on it, it looks like it's not uh, it needs like power source maybe. All right, so it's actually pulling out resin automatically without a power source, as you can see right there. And uh, I just did some research just to make sure. And it looks like if you have one extractor on a tree, it's every uh, 500 ticks, which is 25 seconds. It's going ahead and pulling out about 25 resin, which is good. Now, uh, one thing that we need is we need 250 uh, MBs. What is that? M milliblocks? I feel like an idiot. I don't know. We need 250 um, to be pulled out and put into a press. So what I figured with that is, we'll see if there's other types of pipes in this. So there's like brass item pipes, which is like transferring items. That's not what we're looking for. What we're gonna use is a fluid pipe uh, and we'll need one fluid pipe. And then we'll also need a mechanical pump right here. And theoretically with this, we can pull this into a basin and we can also, Hook it up with a press and then we'll power this whole source probably with just some type of water wheel um because we will need some power to actually pull some things out but that's cool that this is automatically creating resin and i'm curious to see if this like tree has a limit of resin or if this will just continue to constantly pull out resin for us hey we did it look at that and then this should go ahead and press hey and turn it right into rubber for us perfect so uh let me go ahead and explain what's going on here while this machine's working so we have an arboreal extractor that's connected to a log right here. So it's generating some resin and hopefully it doesn't hit like a limit off of these oak logs. I, I really don't know. Uh, then it goes into a mechanical pump, which is being powered through this monstrosity that I'll explain in a second. It goes into the basin, it gets fed into here. And then if you place a depot diagonally from the basin, it'll give this little spout. So when it presses, it presses and places the, uh, the rubber right down here. Now over here, all this is, is a bunch of madness for a water wheel, um, just some cog wheels that go up to power our mechanical press. And then this is just turning the power source to power our mechanical pump. Now, uh, something you might be realizing is that this is really not creating a lot of resin all at once. 
So that probably means that we need a lot of these arboreal extractors to kind of keep up with this madness. I've also now just made engineer's goggles, uh, which will allow us to now look at our basin and it will tell us on how much liquid is inside of the basin, which is kind of a, a good thing for debugging. It also tells you stress units and things along those lines. There we go. Um, all I've done here is just extended our power source through our mechanical press down into another mechanical pump that's pumping from this arboreal extractor uh, that is hooked onto this tree. And that should help it make a little bit more um, a little bit more rubber per second, or I guess it's resin, uh, to then pump into our basin. Still quite slow, but I'm going to have this just run automated, and it should over time create some for us. And I'm, of course, in the future, we'll go ahead and make a much more larger contraption that's going to make a lot of more or a lot more resin per second. Now, while that's up and running, because all we would have to do is just take our rubber and just go ahead and take six of it and just smelt it or bulk blast it, whatever we're feeling. Uh, and then it turns into cured rubber, and we just need six of that to make mechanical belts. Cool. So what we're going to do um, is first, I would think it would be worth it to lay out on how we're going to connect all of our machines. And then once we do that, we can go ahead and we can figure out where we would need belts and how we're going to implement basically the rest of this contraption. So I've done some testing with this. Uh, this is where we're going to be washing um, things from our strainers that should go ahead. I guess some of us gives us clay balls, some of us gives us sand. And the idea is that we need to go ahead and pull out our clay from this machine um, or pull out our sand, wash it, turn it to clay. And then we just need to take our clay and place it into something um, so that we can transport it. But the thing is, we only want to pull it out if it's clay. And the thing that I ran into was that that's kind of telling us that we need to enter the brass age because we need to use filters. Um, someone said to use a brass chute. You still need um, you still need brass to make that. I'll check anyways, though. Yeah, so you still need brass. Not as much brass, you just need a single piece. So we might be able to do something with that to filter these things out. Uh, let me just make sure. Wow, all right, so that's made <laughs> the recipe's a lot different now. Yeah, this isn't easier if we do this because the electron tube is molten iron and polished rose quartz and molten iron comes from a bunch of different things, uh, even like superheated mixers, uh, which is a lot more crazier than what we're looking for. Uh, and I think our best bet is to go into the brass age. Someone did tell me to use an oak drawer um, and just set it to clay and then pipe the items into this oak drawer. So it'll only pipe the items that are clay balls. Uh, but the thing is, is it will automatically pull these items off this depot no matter what. And then it will just hit this and go, oh, it only accepts clay balls and gets stuck in the pipe. So that doesn't really help us. Um, and again, the only way to fix that would be with like a brass funnel. Uh, so I guess that that's the way we're going to have to go with this, which kind of sucks. All right. A lot has happened. Uh, and I've I've done this type of editing. I think I'm going to skip all of that because there is a lot of building, unbuilding, building, unbuilding, things like that. And this is kind of insanity uh, of, of what we've had to do. So uh, I think the best thing to do is to run through how the system works. It's not up and running. We actually have to do a totally different process to even get this thing close to running. Uh, but I want to run through on how this whole system works. And I think the best way to do that is to follow like the quest line. So if we look through this, uh, we could see our first thing, which we did in the previous episode, which is our automatic forest, is we have a tree farm that we just need to manually plant saplings. And then that goes ahead and gets cut from logs uh, to strip logs, strip logs to planks, planks to slabs, and then they're placed into this chest. Now, uh, what we have to do next, which we can actually do, is if we place a funnel onto here, once this belt is moving, it will pump these uh, slabs out of this chest and go all the way over to, which we can do another andesite funnel, into this depot and place our slabs onto this depot, which is cool. That's what we need. Now, that is the log farm. Now, there is a whole other different farm that we have going on over here, which is our kelp farm, which we have right in this area, uh, which is constantly harvesting kelp, placing it into this portable storage interface. And all we need to craft is a chute, which, do I have one? Nope, I do not have a chute. Uh, we just need to place it right here. It will place the kelp onto this belt and pump it into this mixer. Also in this mixer, we're going to be pumping our clay in here, which our clay will be coming from our strainer base, which is getting sand and clay. Uh, our sand, we're going to wash and turn to clay, and then that's going to be placed onto our belt and go into our mixer here. Now, probably realizing, because I think I just said that I don't need brass. That's probably the last clip that I'll put in here. Uh, I need brass. It, it's super difficult to do it without brass and a lot more work than just spending some time just making some brass funnels to just make our lives easier. Uh, so this will have a brass funnel that will only allow clay to go through. 
Now, once we've put both of those ingredients in there, you can see I've, I've set a filter. This makes uh, algae, the algal blend is what it makes, which uh, we just need one piece of kelp and one clay ball, makes algal blend. That will be placed onto a depot. And if you're wondering why we're doing that, uh, the depot with an encased fan and lava will turn it into algal bricks. And then the algal bricks via brass funnel will be placed into this basin, which are algal bricks, uh, if they get mixed with andesite, or andesite cobblestone will turn into andesite alloys, which this is where we're going to have to make our andesite farm in a minute. And then that will be placed onto our mechanical belt once that is mixed. And that will be piped all the way into this deployer. Now, once our andesite is going, our andesite alloy is being pushed onto this depot, and this depot has a saw, which is also going to be pushing onto this depot. And we have that slab from the beginning on this depot. It will turn it right into our kinetic mechanisms after it presses andesite twice and presses the saw once, which we will then need another brass funnel to go ahead and pull said item off of this depot once it turns into that. And then that will be automated going through these belts and placed into our large chest. I know. Insanity. Uh, it's a lot. And we still need to make brass and we still need to make an andesite uh, farm. So I think the very first thing we're going to do is make our make our andesite farm because we're gonna have to go underground anyways uh so let's go ahead and work on that but on a quick side note i figured that this is a, a cool little side challenge that we're doing over here which is our buddy cards which uh you can see i've actually started to collect some from farming from harvesting our crops over there which is pretty cool and i've also made a buddy card binder uh which you can see if i right click it shows all of the different cards that we can hold so theoretically if i grab all of these guys all right so what i've done here is this binder shows your progress of how many cards you have because you need all a, a whole set of shiny cards and a whole set of regular cards and you can see that our first three rows here i've organized them in like uh number order so you can see like base at two three uh six and so on and these first top three there's no shiny cards so this is the first uh 27 cards that we need that are not shiny and we actually have some duplicates as well which is pretty cool and then the bottom set is another 27 cards which is our shiny cards which i've also organized um and we don't have as many so i thought we were super close we're not really we're about like halfway through with getting all these cards and of course we can find these guys more uh by just searching around the area all right so we got it to work kind of sorta uh, and i probably should have expected this is that it doesn't always create andesite cobblestone um it will create sometimes andesite cobblestone but not always so uh you can see i've actually gotten granite cobblestone uh, i've gotten uh, gabro gabro cobblestone uh, and we'll see if we get it um yeah now we got diorite cobblestone granite cobblestone uh so we're getting a bunch of different other odds and ends so uh, i think that's another reason that i'm going to need uh filters because it's going to be throwing things into our machine that we just don't want uh and we we only want the andesite cobblestone to go through but this is a great start uh, the idea is that we have a drill aimed at our cobblestone. It's going to constantly mine. I might set up some type of encased fan here that's just like blowing the items towards us. Uh, and that might go ahead and pull the items then onto the mechanical belt and things like that to just help us out. Uh, I just need an andesite funnel to place it into this chute. And then right under here, if I power this encased fan, it should blow the items through this monstrosity of chutes that I ended up building. Uh, I have a feeling that they were hoping for, because they say an andesite lift, that I was going to build like an elevator that was going to go up and down and keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and so on, uh, just as a way to like bring Anisei up and down via, via an elevator, essentially. But uh, I already know in the future that we're going to be able to do the system up on top of the surface, so I figured it's kind of useless to go that far into this, um, especially because if we go into... Yeah, if we go into the market, uh, for 32 gold, we can buy a piece of bedrock, which would then allow us to do this whole system wherever we want to. So I figured it's kind of a waste of time, uh, in a sense, than just uh, getting a ton of andesite and just going that route. Uh, so yeah, that, that's what we've done. All right, so after some time, we kind of have this system up and running uh, to a point. I haven't done the brass stage yet. Uh, but I figure it's worth it to walk through on this madness. So everything I just showed you is still the same, except I've placed an encased fan on top that's sucking in air and pulling most of the blocks off of this piece of bedrock. Um, as you can see, some of them get screwed up and fall into our like water abyss, but most of them get sucked in here, and it's mining fast enough that I don't think it really matters um, that we're like not getting every block. Um, but what we had to do here 
is I needed the encased fan to be faster than our drill, which this gearbox is connected into the back of the drill. So what I did was I did our gear uh, trick where over here we just have, whoops, we have three sets of, or three, four, four sets of water wheels here. Uh, and they are going into a large cog wheel to a small, large, small, large, small, so on until it's going super fast and then being sent in here to power our encased fan, our belt, and also the encased fan shooting the items up into the air. Then over here, I've just pulled off of a different segment of the gear with shafts so that it's slower, and I connected that to the drill. And I did that so that the drill would be slower. Now, I don't think that there's anything that I can put in this like area to block those items from falling into that abyss at certain moments. Uh, if you know, let me know, because I don't think that there's anything I can put without accidentally turning my thing to obsidian. Uh, but as a whole, it, it works semi-good. Um, I need to now go ahead and work on getting brass, though, so that we can go ahead and sort these items. All right, so I was actually able to get it a lot better now uh, after playing with it a little bit more. I was able to fill in this area of the cog wheels so that the cog wheels are just going along the side. And that seems to keep a majority of the blocks to the point that we actually have a lineup of blocks now stuck here. Because uh, I've been testing for probably close to an hour. So I've actually filled our chutes that are just going into nothingness at the moment. Uh, so that's why they're all stuck. But this is producing a lot of blocks at a time, which is good. Uh, and what I'm going to do is add a smart chute underneath one of these belts and into like a thing of lava that's just going to filter out anything but andesite cobblestone and just get rid of it because we don't need it. Uh, and then that should kind of help out with this mess. Now, this is the part that I've been dreading because uh, no matter which route we go with a smart chute with certain areas or a brass funnel, um, at the end of the day, we need a bunch of electron tubes, which is quite expensive. Um, you need molten iron. And that needs to be placed into a spout and then shot onto rose quartz. Uh, and I've been sitting here trying to figure out what's the best way to get molten iron, which you can melt it using like a seared melter, uh, which it looks like you're just melting down iron things, um, which you would need lava and a, like a fuel source and iron, um, which seems super expensive. Um, you can entity melt. So if you put an iron golem into a smelterly control or smelt smelter, whatever, we give up on that word. Uh, then it will turn into molten iron. Um, you could use a foundry, which, uh, also needs lava or, I guess, blazing blood and iron dust. Or you can use a magma crucible, which is what I think I'm going to go with because I think that this is the easiest route to go to turn iron dust into molten iron. So let's see what this costs. So I said that now, uh... <laughs> The, the, to even make this, we need refined radiance and a bunch of other odds and ends. So that's not the way we're going to do this. Man. Okay, I've been spending some time looking into this, and I thought that we were hopeless. So if we go with the Tinker's Construct right now, we might be able to make a smeltery. Uh, and then from there, we can actually melt down iron and then place it into a bucket, which gives us a molten iron bucket. And then from there, we can place it into a spout and then spout that on... Um, rose quartz to actually go ahead and make us our electron tubes. All right, so I nearly just started to cry because uh, I, I built this part of the machine, right? And uh, I was like, man, I'm missing something. Then I was like, oh, I'm missing the smelterly controller. Uh, and I clicked on it and, and then I saw these things and I was like, I'm going to cry. I was like, I can't believe that this is the, I, like I built the whole thing and now we're back to this stuff. But then I clicked on it, and it's actually just our kinetic mechanisms, which we were trying to automate, but we can use, which is cured rubber, which we've actually automated in the beginning. So we can do this. All right, theoretically, this should work. So I've thrown our iron in, which we can see that they're showing as iron ingots right now. Uh, and then, theoretically, once it fully smelts, it should turn to, yep, molten iron. And then if I right-click on this... Oh, no, I totally did this wrong. Wait. <gasps> We did it! <laughs> oh my god. Oh, you have no idea how, how good that feels right now that we have that to work. And we also have uh, a smel uh, smelting station up and running. By the way, I think I'm butchering that word. Whatever, we'll say smelting station. Uh, but now that we have molten iron, we just need to make a spout over a depot uh, where we can actually just go ahead and place our liquid into there. And I'm sure there's a way to automate this to just like pull it out. Uh, actually, maybe through these seared drains, we could pull it out and just pipe it into a spout. Let's see if we can do that. All right, let's give this a shot. So if I, oh, I got to shift right click on this. 
I wonder if this will, yeah, it does. It pumps right out. Look at that. Uh, Cause then we now have our molten iron pumped right into our spout, which by the way, uh, I know someone's going to say something like rocket. Um, you need copper machines. Uh, copper machines are literally the exact same recipe uh, that we just did, where this is just a kinetic mechanism and cured rubber. Uh, and if you make eight of those in a copper casing, you can actually make the spouts. Uh, and I think also an item drain is about the same thing. Uh, but there we go. So now if we just place buckets underneath here and we throw our iron into this, we should be good to go. I also figure it's, uh, it's worth noting that if we take our iron and we crush it in our millstone, uh, it goes from our crushed ore into uh dust and then what we used to do is we used to just smelt it which gives us that one to one if we now use our melting station that we have right there uh we get a one to three so we get a little bit bonus actually which we might as well check these off because we actually have this up and running and then you can ingot cast it as well uh so we're doing pretty good um and then at the end of course it turns to an ingot so we've built kind of an indirect another way of ore processing there we go we officially have a portal up and running uh because we need uh, rose quartz, which rose quartz come from certus quartz, charged certus quartz, or nether quartz. Uh, and we're going to need a bunch. So I figured actually just going to the nether, making another portal is useful. Especially, I have a feeling probably we're going to need a blaze burner in the next episode. So it just kind of makes sense. Uh, but now that we've done this, I want to make, there we go, some golden boots. Because if I throw that on there, we're going to have less things attack us. Um, a little dangerous to bring all these items, but you know what? We only live once, people. Whoa, what is this? Hellbark leaves. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in here that I don't know about. <clears throat> this is gonna be a little. <laughs> this is gonna be a little tense. Look at that. There we go. There's our electron tubes, which I don't know if they stack. So I think we're about to fill my inventory real quick. Ah, uh, but man, look at that. It's just so perfect. There we go. Thirteen electron tubes. All right, so we're gonna have to do something a little interesting here. Because what we have to do is, in order to make brass, it's not like the typical recipe, of course. Uh, and at first I was like, oh, we'll use an induction smelter. But we're running into the same problems where I need to do all this craziness and we just don't have that. Uh, so what we'll have to do is we are going to have to use our casting table that we used before. Uh, because these other options just aren't really an option for us. Uh, and you can't just like throw, from what I can see, just like copper and zinc into uh into a melting station it just doesn't work that way uh you would need to throw in blocks of brass or something brass to actually get that to work um or you would need to use a mixer and mix molten copper and molten zinc together and turn that into molten brass uh and then the molten brass could then go into the casting table uh and then from there you could press out ingots or press out uh practically anything honestly uh very curious to see how we can do this. Now, something to keep in mind is we can actually craft these copper cans, uh, which hold exactly one ingot of fluid, uh, which might be kind of useful right now because we can use copper cans to pull out our liquid that's currently in our system um, and then replace it to whatever we're looking for, then add that back in and so on and so on um, until we're basically good to go. Uh, so let me let me do some messing around and see what I can get up uh, or get working. Man, I was hoping. So I uh, <laughs> I threw in molten zinc and molten copper because I was like, maybe it'll mess up and it'll mix it together. But that doesn't that actually doesn't work, uh, which kind of sucks. So what I'll do is probably the same system as this, um, where I'm just going to go ahead and attach a mechanical pump and pump it into a basin with a mixer. Uh, and we'll just go that route, I guess, uh, to, to go ahead and mix it. And then I guess once it's mixed, we'll then have to add it back into our system, which will be a little interesting. Well, that's not what I meant. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> Rocket was just testing here, uh, and he he did make uh, brass. But uh, if we if we right click on this, uh, we've we've only made a single yeah uh, one ingot and three nuggets. Yeah, we need a lot more than one ingot. <laughs> uh, we also have to make what is it? Yeah, we also have to make a cast, which I totally forgot to do. So what we're going to do with this is if I take these guys, theoretically, I just press that out. Thank you. And then press that out again. Thank you again. There you go. I've thrown gold into here. And then if I press this, it should go around the iron ingot, right? Harden and turn into an ingot gold cast, which is exactly what we're looking for. 
So now if I add our molten brass back in here, which how do I do this? There we go. If I right click on this, it should put it in back into here. And if I, uh oh, all right, there we go. Then if I right click on this, it should go ahead and fill this cast and turn right into brass. There we go. We actually got, yeah, just like that actual alloys. <laughs> we finally got an alloy, but we've only made one. Um, but it's a start. It's a start. So we can at least make one smart funnel uh, up and running. There we go. And that should now work, theoretically. So if it's not andesite cobblestone, it should be dropped right into the lava and be despawned, theoretically. Um, which I think it will work because you can see that our items are no longer being stuck in this area. They're actually getting sucked through the system. And one thing that we do have to do is actually clear this whole entire mess. Uh, because there is a lot of blocks in here that are not andesite cobblestone. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, I think I think we have the whole system up and running. I think. Uh, the, the one thing that we have to worry about is we have to power this whole system. So let me go ahead and do that really quick off camera. All right, so we've got our brass funnels placed in. And before I walk through the whole system, I'm going to go ahead and power the system up for us. And then we'll see if it works correctly. Oh my god, I think it's working. All right, we just had clay wash. And then it turned into algal blend because we have our kelp going in. Okay, it's still mixing, still mixing. There we go. It turned into bricks and the bricks linked in with the andesite cobblestone. That turned into andesite. Oh no, is this not working yet? Ooh, we might have screwed up. It works. I, this has been the hardest thing I've ever done on YouTube. I, it works. This is the worst design possible for this machine. But it works. Um, there, there's some mess ups in here, but we can see that we are actually making automatic kinetic mechanisms. Oh my god. Uh, let me let me run you through this madness. By the way, I've ruined my farm to make this make this work. Uh, so from this side, uh, which I've never actually patched, we can actually patch this now. Um, oh, we never filtered out. We never filtered out uh, leaves or anything like that, but that's okay. We can filter that at a different time. So this is our tree farm in here, which we will actually stop real quick to grab our saplings out. Um, and if we plant down our trees in here, they will slowly grow and they will go ahead and get harvested by our uh, sawmill, essentially. It's going to take our logs, turn them to strip logs, turn them to planks, and then turn them to slabs and place them in this chest. These slabs are going to continue over to the deployers and we'll get back to that in a second. Under here is our andes cobblestone, andesite cobblestone generator that is bringing it all the way up to the surface and throwing it into a basin. And prior to that step, we have a clay generator, which is generating types of different sands, washing it, um, and then placing it right out and onto here. This is our kelp farm, which is generating kelp, throwing that into this basin. And then this mixes into algal blend as soon as there's room, as you can see right there. And then when the algal blend smelts, it gets placed into here, uh, turns into uh, algal bricks, uh, and the al or turns into algal bricks, and then mixes with our andesite cobblestone, turns into andesite alloys, goes up this ramp through an andesite funnel, which places andesite cobblestone inside of here, uh, or andesite alloys, sorry, which is then being placed into both of these deployers, so it's constantly filling their hands, and these deployers are pressing andesite once. Andesite 2, and then this is the saw for the last one, and then it turns into our kinetic mechanisms, which is working super well. We just made 32 during me just walking through that process. Oh my god. And I think that's where I'm going to end this episode, because this has been days of recording. <laughs> um, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching the video. Make sure to drop a like, make sure to subscribe. I am sure that there will be somewhere on YouTube and Reddit someone's going to make this entire farm in like four blocks. Not really, but a lot smaller than what I've had to do. Uh, but this works at the end of the day, and I'm sure that you guys can come up with some own designs and hop in my Discord if you want to go ahead and share them. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys all in the next one.